Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to show you something really interesting. Now you know that you can use ChatGPT to generate quiz questions and even select the answers, but I'm going to show you a pretty slick way that you can have ChatGPT export the content and import it into Canvas without you having to really copy and paste directly into a Canvas quiz. So stay tuned and we're going to explore how to automate that process. So I want to give a shout out to Philip Arnold from Ozark's technical community and he's the one who really nudged me in this direction and let me know that this is possible. He and I are alum of the IELOL program, class of 2014, and so shout out to him and his institution. So I'm going to hop into ChatGPT here and we're going to start, we want to specify in our prompt the type of question that we want to ask as well as the point values and of course the subject matter content. So I'm going to ask ChatGPT to create 10 random multiple choice, multiple response, and true false questions worth one point each. And you can of course specify that it's different point values. And I want the topic to be on psychological principles of sensation and perception for an intro psychology college course. Now if I were to run that query, it would generate a quiz for me. It would have multiple questions, 10 questions, and it would show me multiple response options as well as the true answer. I could copy and paste that into Canvas, but that's not what we're going to do today. We're going to take this a step further and get more sophisticated. Okay, so here are the instructions that I'm going to give to ChatGPT. I'm going to say format the quiz into a table with the following format. Column A is the type of question. MC for multiple choice, MR multiple response, and TR true false. Column B is not to be used, but it must be there. Column C is the point value of the questions. Column D is the question body. Column E is the correct answer. The numbers 1 through 5 each correspond to one of the possible answers listed in columns F through J. Use 1 to indicate A, 2 to indicate B, 3 to C, 4 to indicate D, 5 to indicate E. For true-false questions, 1 is true and 0 is false. Clear any unused cells. All questions and answers must be accurate and not fabricated. Now this point is especially true for ChatGPT 3.5. For 4, we, I see a, a lot less of this, but it's good to keep that in there anyway. Columns F through J are the possible answer choices and you can have two or more. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So from here it generates a table and I'm going to go ahead and copy this table. Not the first row, I'm just going to copy the content below that first row. So go ahead and copy this content and we're going to head over to Excel and we're going to paste it but I don't want any formatting at all. So I'm just going to paste it without formatting. I copied some extra stuff here so I'm just going to delete that. And here's what we have. We have column A with MC, MR, or TR. So that's a multiple choice, multiple response, or true false question. Column B has to be empty. Column C is the point value. And I could go in afterwards and change this if I wanted this to be three points for these. Then this is a quick and easy way that I can adjust the point values. For me, right now, it's a 10 point quiz and there's 10 questions, so just one point per question. Column D is the question. Now, before I even get to this point, I could go into ChatGPT and I can review this and make sure that all of the questions are good. If maybe I wanted to omit some questions or add or modify some questions, I might say, hey, that fourth question, can you reword it a little bit or can you replace it with this question? So I could do all of that in ChatGPT. I'm making the assumption that these are good questions and that the answers are correct. And so column E is the correct answer. And then I have columns F through J this would be answer option number one, option number two, number three, number four, and number five. And then I know that for this first question, number four or column I is the correct answer. For this question, number two, then the third option would be the correct one. This is a multiple response question. And so it looks like one, two, and four are the correct answers. This one is one, three, and five. And here's a true false question. A couple of these are true. There's another true false question, which is false. And so that's what we're looking at right now in this Excel spreadsheet. So I can still modify. I'm at the point where at any point in the process, you can really modify whether you're in ChatGPT or Excel, even when you're in Canvas, you'll be able to modify. But at this point, I want to save this and I'm going to save it as a CSV file. So I'll go save as I'm going to find my location. I'm going to put site quiz for this one. And instead of saving it as an Excel spreadsheet, I want to save it as a CSV file. So make sure that you choose that 
and then you'll go ahead and save. I'm gonna put that away, so that's done for now, and now I need to convert this to a QTI zip file. And so a good website for that is this one, canconvert.k-state.edu slash QTI. When you're on this site, then you'll choose the file, and I'm just gonna choose this site quiz CSV file. I'll go ahead and open that and perform the conversion. Now I'm seeing an error here, and I'm not even gonna edit this out of the video, because this happens, sometimes we make mistakes. It's saying that they're having a problem with the quiz questions five, six, and 10, unrecognized format, TR. I didn't want to have TR, I meant TF, true, false. And so let me pull up the file again, and I'm gonna change that, indeed, yeah, that's TR, that's supposed to be TF, true, false. And so I'm gonna manually change that, and that must have been a problem with my prompt. I'll go ahead and resave this. All right, so that should be saved as the CSV file. Let's hop back over here and let's try that file once more. And I'm gonna perform the conversion. Okay, so now you can see that I've done this a few times today. I have the file saved and I'm gonna hop over to the Canvas course where I want to put the file. So once I'm in my course, I'm gonna hop over to settings and then we're gonna import the content. And the file that I'm gonna import is the content type is a QTI zip file. And so once I have that, I'm going to select the file. This is under downloads, I have site quiz, so this is the file that I wanna import. So now I need to select the default question bank and I'm just gonna create one. I'm gonna call it psych quiz. And I'll go ahead and import it. So it might take a minute. And once it's done, I can hop over to my quiz section and I can see my psych quiz right here. So it's unpublished, but I can preview it. And so I'm gonna glance to see all the questions are here. So I have my questions, I have my option types right here. Let me go ahead and edit the quiz, make sure that the questions and the answers are correct. And so here's my question, and then here's the correct answer, and then I can just go ahead and check all these questions and make sure that the correct answer is okay. And I might confirm with my spreadsheet to make sure that this is all the way it's supposed to be. And so once I'm done with that, then I can hop over and I can publish it and that saves a whole lot of time that I don't have to be copying the question and then typing out each of the five responses and then indicating which is the correct answer. It's just a very polished way that I can do this and even if I'm correcting the content that ChatGPT is creating and making modifications and iterations, then it's still a very streamlined process, I would say. And it's a great way that you can create question banks and pop quizzes for your classes. Hey, this is post-production me, and I'm just about done editing this video, but there's actually one more thing I want to show you. I'm gonna stay off camera because my hair hasn't dried for the day yet. But I have this table here, and I can see in my instructions now, now that I have the foresight of hindsight bias, TR, that should be TF, true, false. And so I have my table here, and it generated this output, but I wanna add one more component to my Canvas quiz. So I'm gonna say, can you provide an explanation of the correct answers for each question if the students get the question wrong? So that provides me some more information that maybe I could put into the Canvas course. I'm gonna reword this a different way and see if it gives me um, different materials to work with. So I'm kind of asking the same thing, but in a slightly different way. I'm gonna say, can you provide a response for each question if the students get the answer wrong? So I'm gonna ask also, can you provide positive feedback for each question if the student gets the question right? So that can make the quiz slightly more interactive. If they get the question right, then they'll get some positive feedback, and if they get it wrong, then I have a message that will help them as well. And finally, I'm going to ask ChatGPT, can you write up an overview of the quiz as an introduction? And this may be a little bit long for a quiz. So I'm gonna say, can you shorten that to two paragraphs and maybe suggest an image or two that I can include? So I think that's probably more appropriate for my quiz. Just a couple of quick paragraphs, overview of what we're gonna cover, some suggested images, and I could take these prompts and maybe I could expand the prompts. I could ask ChatGPT, can you go into more detail about these suggested images? And I can take that prompt over to Dolly or to Midjourney or Leonardo.ai and I could generate an image you know, based on these prompts and I could intersperse those with my introduction. And so that's just a few tips and tricks to enhance your quiz, I think. You can start it in ChatGPT, integrate it into Canvas, 
And what this all does is it takes out a little bit of the administrative work. There's just so much copying and pasting and the mechanics of building the quiz that if we can automate this process, then over time, it's going to save you a lot of effort and time. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And until next time. Happy Disney morning.